Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm back for a third episode with my new friend and just an amazing thought leader, Ron Friedman. He's a PhD and he's written a new book that, that's called Decoding Greatness. I'm so lucky to be recording this before the book even comes out. I got an advanced copy. Absolutely love this book. Couldn't put it down. Saw some things about, about me in it that I do well, but I also saw some things that I can do a lot better. I learned a lot from this book and taping these episodes with Ron took my knowledge to the to the next level. And in this episode, we're going to go really deep on a specific topic. How can we use the principles in Decoding Greatness to deepen our relationships with our most important clients, our most important prospects, and our most important strategic partners and colleagues? And this 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 episode's interesting because it went in a different place than I thought it would. I had some ideas that that Ron might pull in for these these questions that we're asking in season two. He had a different idea and it was better. So it was really fun to sort of mash up where I thought things might go, but where he thought things might go, and it just resulted into a much better outcome than I ever could have expected. So here is the episode on decoding greatness, specifically around deepening relationships. Now, before we get into it, know that if you want a real simple article that gives the eight mindsets that you should have to think about taking your business development game to the next level, sort of the our version of decoding greatness from all the rainmakers we worked with all over the world, now almost 20,000 folks, professionals that we've trained, just head over to growbigplaybook.com and you get an instant download with the eight key things you need to think about and have in your mind to become great at business development. All right, so here's Ron Friedman, PhD, on what we can do to deepen our relationships. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. If you didn't catch the last episode where Ron Friedman, my guest, author of Decoding Greatness, and I talked about how to create a scoreboard to drive more of your success, well, you wanna go back and watch or listen to that one. In this episode, Ron, I'm going to kick off with the big question, what can our audience do to deepen relationships using all of the knowledge in Decoding Greatness? I'm going to give you a little bit of a counterintuitive answer, and it is to use your relationship as test markets. Now, uh, this, is, this is kind of a twofer where you're going to deepen relationships, but you're also going to get a lot of great feedback on some potential business ideas. And so... Um, test markets are often utilized by wildly successful entrepreneurs to fine tune their ideas before they go to market. And we often think that when we have a new idea, we need to go big right out of the gate. But in fact, what we find in doing the research on this is that people who are at the best of their field actually don't do that. What they do is they test their ideas with a small market first to determine whether or not they resonate, fine tune them, and then go big. And what that does is it enables you to take a lot more risks because if you know you don't have to be successful right out of the gate, there's no reason to go to the widest possible audience. You can actually test a lot more things. And so comedians do this where they test their jokes. You know, it's Chris Rock, we've all heard. And um, there's also the example of Aziz Ansari in Decoding Greatness where they go into comedy clubs, they test their materials, they figure out what work what works before they go to that Netflix special. But it's not they're just comedians. Politicians do this by going to uh, speaking at small events like VFW halls and diners. Um, speakers do this all the time by giving free lectures at uh, community colleges and places like that so they can really fine tune their speeches before they get paid for the, get those big paying gigs. And when it comes to deepening our relationship, having those conversations with potential clients and saying, hey, I'm considering this, this potential approach. Uh, I'm curious, uh, what's your advice for me? And this is key. Don't ask for feedback. Ask for advice. And this is one of the research findings I report in Decoding Greatness is that asking for, uh, f for advice actually gets you more feedback than asking for feedback. And it's because when you ask someone for feedback, what they do often is they compare your current performance to your previous performance. So they generally you get a response like that it's good or it's not good. Uh, what you ask for feedback, uh, you ask for advice, 
and what they are primed to think about are the potential ways that you could improve it. And that leads to a lot more suggestions. In fact, Harvard uh, University has found that it leads to, in many cases, over 20% more suggestions. And it serves two purposes. One is you get great feedback on potential ideas, but you also deepen the relationship because people love to feel, they love to contribute and they love to feel like their opinion is valued. And so it's a little bit counterintuitive because I'm not gonna come here and tell you, you know, give, give, give. I'm actually going to tell you, take, 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 but do so in a way that let, lets people feel like their opinion is valued and allows them to contribute. Oh, Ron, I, again, this is just like the last couple episodes. Everybody, if you didn't check those out, you need to go do it. It's so good. Ron, your, your insights are so rich. There's so much density to these interviews. And one of the things we talk about a lot is in these highly expertise-driven worlds, which, which our audience is in, you know, lawyers, consultants, account managers at large service-based companies, they're grow up learning their expertise and then at some point they've got to switch over to bring in business to 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 grow relationship to, to retain work and they can be so hesitant to ask for help they really can it really can be a barrier so i actually want you to hit this head on from your perspective um because because your idea from ask for advice is so powerful it's actually a major technique and major thing that we teach in our system it's actually called ask for advice so pretty cool alignment with what you what you talk about but hit this idea head on that if somebody says ron you know what i'm here to serve my clients i you know i shouldn't i shouldn't waste their time with asking for advice i don't want to put them out i don't want to be a hindrance to them that's what they're thinking they might not say it that strongly but that's what they could be thinking what's your advice to them I think you're miscalibrating your approach. I think what people want in their relationships is to be valued and respected and appreciated. And what more, what better way to honor someone than to say, I value your opinion. I would love your mm. input on what I could do to improve. You know, there, there's a power dynamic at play there where if you're positioning yourself as better than your clients, that can work to a point and certainly with particular types of clients but if you really want to deepen the relationship in a way that gets them invested in your success asking for advice is a wonderful way to do it and, and the other thing that not only not only is is, it a, is an interesting tool I don't, and i don't want to position this as kind of like mind games where uh you're right. going to trick them into, into you might actually not get get more than you're bargaining for because you'll get some interesting feedback potentially uh, feedback you hadn't considered uh, you know, we are not our clients, and it's really, really hard for us to imagine what it is like to be our clients. And part of that is, and I discussed this in Chapter 7, the, the curse of knowledge, where knowing in particular information makes it impossible to imagine not knowing it. And so, for example, because you as a professional are so aware of your competitors and what they're offering, you might overemphasize differentiators that your prospect doesn't care about. And so speaking to your customer, getting their advice allows them, puts them in a position of feeling respected, gets you some feedback uh, that you can then use to fine tune your ideas and might open up uh, your mind to ideas you hadn't considered and can lead them to suggest people who actually want that offering. So there's so many, so many uh, uh, potential wins there that we overlook when we neglect that opportunity. I completely agree. And I'll even add to that, Ron, is that it also provides multiple follow-ups later. I mean, how powerful it is to, to give your opinion, to give some somebody advice. And boy, I bet you and I could both think of examples where we did that. And then months later, weeks later, the person follows back up and says, hey, I did the thing we talked about. Here's this awesome stuff that happened. Boy, that's this another wonderful feeling you get as the person that gave the advice. So it, a lot of times our professionals, I want to put a fine point on this, they can say, man, I, I, so-and-so is really important to me, but I struggle to find follow-ups. So this ask for advice idea does all the things you mentioned, and it provides this annuity of follow-ups that you can go back later and make them feel even better because you acted on the advice that they gave. You should consider doing this for a living, though. <laughs> <laughs> Great so point. <laughs> so let's, I, I, I can't say it enough. That's why so many times as I was reading Decoding and Grace, I'm, Greatness, I'm like, I can't believe I haven't met Ron before because he sounds like me, <laughs> or this is this new insider that's on the edge of something we teach. So it's just the alignment between our content is so strong. So let's finish this episode with this. If you, I just want to ask a big overarching comment. I know you've, you've hit the, the ask for advice idea, but if, but what, what's your next, like, when you think about decoding greatness and you had to close this episode on deepening relationships, what's your next big piece of advice you'd give 
just from maybe even if it's not in the book like your personal experience anything what what is the last nugget you would give on deepening relationships so you know i practice what i preach so in the book i talk about becoming a collector first as a means of enabling yourself to find patterns in the people whose work you respect and that can include finding uh, starting a collection of work of people who communicate really well and deepen relationships really effectively. We all have people in our lives who we look for as the model, as the people who do this extremely well. And starting a collection of their emails, starting a collection of their the different ways that they communicate and having that to look at, visit almost like a museum. I describe it in the book of having a museum of examples to inspire you the next time you need to write something similar. And then decoding it by looking for some 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 noticeable patterns and I do this where I've noticed that people who are really good at over email and this is something that may seem obvious but man it is hard to execute is they always lead with not what's important to them but what's important to you and they do this really really well and they will manage to still get in what it is they want to ask of you but starting with what's important to the client, to the person you're outreaching to, even if it's just to talk about a, a topic that you've connected with before, a non-work related topic, just starting with that is so powerful. You will notice this if you start your own collection of people who've written you well-worded emails. You'll notice them doing this all the time. And then practicing that by having, by once you have some of those patterns that you've not uh, uh, identified, creating that scoreboard for yourself so that you can then look to give yourself fee your own feedback on the emails you've written before they go out. So you can have a checklist of things you can look for, like does this email connect with the client on a non-work related matter? And if it doesn't, you fix it before it goes out. And it's a way of not only identifying what are the things that work, but also ensuring that you implement them in your own daily life. Ron, I love it. I think that that's the perfect ending chapter to this episode. So people are going to want more of you. They're going to want to dig into Decoding Greatness and the other things you do. Where should they go? They can go on to decodinggreatnessbook.com. That is a great place to find out more about the book, pre-order a copy, and get a free course called Reverse Engineering Success that shows you how to implement some of these strategies. And you can also visit me at ronfriedmanphd.com where you can learn more about my work and get some free resources and um, find out the latest. I love it. Ron, thank you for being on the show. And everybody, hey, check this out. You got to look, go back and watch or listen to those last couple episodes. And the next one, I'm going to ask Ron, how do we hack our own habits to be successful? Ron, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure.